Sometimes when you begin a journey, you think you know what you're getting yourself into. But then you realize you may have bitten off more than you can chew. That's kind of how this story begins. Buy an abandoned farm. Realize the enormity of what we've done. Overwhelmed begins to feel like the understatement of the century. When we bought this, this field was overgrown with thorn trees and all sorts of weeds. And uh, our neighbor uh, brush hogged it for us and actually was able to, to bale a few bales of hay. But after he was done, we noticed that there was a massive amount of plastic from uh, round bales in the field underneath the grass. We didn't really know how bad it was even then until we actually started getting up here to clean out. It would be embedded in the roots of the grass so much and down in the dirt that you couldn't just pull it up because pieces of it would rip and you'd have to actually get a hatchet and dig it out. Kind of like the, the old clown trick where they'd pull the, <laughs> the, the handkerchiefs out of their mouth in a pile and it's like that pulling it out. And we joked that it was like an octopus with tentacles because it had a tentacle going this way and one going this way and one going that way and you keep pulling and then it'd come out from another direction. It's just crazy. One of the biggest concerns for us was that we needed to get the hay field cleaned up so that we could amend it and get it ready for hay season. We're needing and wanting to put hay up this year. And then other reasons included, I mean, if we want to get animals, we need to have all of this trash and plastic picked up. And we were actually finding animals in the plastic. When we dug one particular bunch up, I remember, we found a turtle living in it. I don't know if he was... I don't think he was stuck. He just found no. a dry place. But yeah. Our best guess is they just left the bales sit in the field till the cows ate through them and ate down around them. Yeah, we've actually found rib cages from several cows that actually have partially digested plastic just bunched up in the middle of the rib cage. So that tells us that the cow was so hungry that she ate the plastic as well as the hay. And we cleaned up, we've cleaned up most of the plastic in this field, but we keep finding it. Speaking of trash, we found this behind our machine shed buried in the weeds, partially torn apart. Um, no idea why it was sitting there, but it took us about 10 minutes of fiddling with it to get it fired up and running. So this is our, what we call the machine shed. This is where tractors used to be stored and are now stored again. The previous owner was raising rabbits in here, and there was six to eight inches in places of rabbit manure just laying. And on top of that, there was trash mixed in with it as well, and on top of it there was trash on it. And glass. And glass, and I mean, scraps of steel, fence posts, air conditioners. Some toys. useful things. More plastic. And we did find some useful things in it that we were able to clean and up. And more plastic. <laughs> So, well, there wasn't as much plastic in here. There was itty bitty pieces Little of Little pieces, plastic. feed bags. No, 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 let me tell you what I picked up. <laughs> there was itty little, little bitty pieces of buckets, like tiny pieces all scattered and all in piles. And then there was needles. And then there was pieces of Vaseline containers, tons of Vaseline containers, tons of needles. Yeah, lots of little plastic pieces. So we, we, someone had already started um, a, a burn pile, so we added to it um, anything that we found that could burn, um, some metal items that had wood and plastic on them that would burn as well. We were able to burn some things, and we were able to save a pile to scrap as well, but there was a lot of stuff like the plastic that we could not burn. We, we quickly realized, trying to start this pile, that this plastic we found in the field did not burn very well. Even if it was dry, it would just kind of melt into a clump instead of burning. The biggest issue of all was how are we going to get rid of this stuff? So we decided to order a great big dumpster. Not cheap at all. In fact, I actually kind of hated having to spend money to get rid of someone else's trash. But when we bought this farm, we knew what we were getting into and we had it filled within a week and a half, I think. 
but it was so full when he came that it was actually sliding backward off the truck, and he said that wasn't a good sign. It was pulling the truck <laughs> backwards to the dumpster when he tried to pull it up the truck, literally taking the truck and just sliding it across the gravel. How many tons of trash have we cleaned up off this place so far? At least 14. As we work, we realize this land is our home. It's their home. All of this mess has in turn seeded this growing desire to care for this place as if it were a member of our family. We also realize that what feels impossible, completely and utterly overwhelming, is actually possible. It may take a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and muddling through days when you feel like giving up, but the rewards? The rewards are so worth the struggle. If you want to see more farm cleanup, be sure and subscribe because we'll have more videos, especially with these barns, coming up soon. See you next time.